This is Beth Post, and I'm a speech language pathologist and assistive technology specialist in Montgomery County, Maryland. Check out www.matnonline.com for outstanding resources on best practices in assistive technology. And be sure to click on the link to our wiki to contribute your best tools and ideas. You're listening to the always riveting and informative AT Tipcast. Welcome to the AT Tips Cast, exploring and investigating the implementation of assistive technology in public schools. I'm your host, Chris Bouguet. This is episode number 33, recorded on May 20th, 2009. Here it is, the end of May, and yet again, I'm late on getting out an episode for Better Hearing and Speech Month. I haven't totally neglected Better Hearing and Speech. Hey, guys, guys, can you keep it down? I'm trying to record an episode here. Okay, Daddy. Thanks, thanks. As I was saying, I did participate in the video contest put on by the American Speech Language Hearing Association, also known as ASHA, and I have a link to the video I created called Two Minute Mouse over at the blog attipscast.wordpress.com. Still, I was hoping to get an AT Tips code. Hold on a second. Hey, guys, really, can you keep it down for me? You're being way too loud. Oops. Sorry, Daddy. Still too loud. Try your inside voice. Am I like this? No, that's your outside voice. Try like this. Yeah, Yeah, see, that's much better. Okay, Daddy, I'll be quieter. Have fun with your podcast. (sighs) The boy apparently isn't getting it. Time to implement AT tip number 47, a special tip in honor of Better Hearing and Speech Month, voice feedback modulators. Sometimes a student is too loud. Sometimes a student is too quiet. Sometimes a student uses an appropriate volume that is just right. Teaching a student to use what is an acceptable volume in different situations can be tricky. Everyone is probably aware of the inside voice and outside voice strategy that our grandmothers taught us, but for some students, controlling and managing volume is a difficult task that isn't solved with the very simple correlation of outside equals loud and inside equals quiet. One strategy that could be implemented is a voice feedback modulator. The student and teacher can work together to create a visual with a movable part that the student or teacher manipulates to indicate how loud that student is actually being. A simple voice feedback modulator might have three boxes, a red, green, and blue or white box arranged vertically on a small index card. The teacher and student punch two holes in the card, one above the red box and one below the blue or white box. Then, they thread a bead onto a pipe cleaner and fasten the ends of the pipe cleaner into the punched holes. The student or teacher slides the bead up and down the pipe cleaner to indicate the current volume level of the student, with red being too loud, green being just right, and blue or white being too quiet. Without using any words, a teacher could simply come over to the voice feedback modulator located on the student's desk and slide the bead up or down to indicate the volume level. The teacher could also prompt the student to make decisions about how loud he is being by simply asking him to rate his own volume on the voice feedback modulator. There are all sorts of variations of voice feedback modulators that could be created. A voice feedback modulator could have numbers, like from 1 to 10, like on an old-fashioned volume knob, where the student indicates how loud they're being according to number. A student could even chart his voice numbers over time to demonstrate his success at keeping his voice within acceptable parameters. Another variation is to make the voice feedback modulator circular, like a pie chart, with a brad fastener holding an arrow, like a spinner. The student or teacher could move the arrow to the appropriate place on the circular chart, just like moving the bead up and down. Although the previous examples have been about volume, a similar voice feedback modulator could be implemented to demonstrate and practice appropriate rate or pitch. If a student is talking too fast and always talks too fast and sometimes talking too fast decreases intelligibility, then a voice feedback modulator might help. To slow the rate down. Likewise, if a student uses a pitch that is too high or too low, a voice feedback modulator could help that student target in on an appropriate pitch. One other way I've seen a voice feedback modulator used by teachers is as a whole classroom tool and not necessarily for individual students. I'm sure many teachers still use the old standby of turning out the lights when the noise level gets too loud and they need students' attention. Or the other strategy of teaching the students to say bell 
whenever they hear the teacher say taco or say king whenever they hear the teacher say burger like this taco Bell. burger king. king these are effective strategies no doubt but another way is to have a large voice feedback modulator mounted in the room or even digitally if you're lucky enough to have an interactive whiteboard when the class is getting too raucous the teacher can walk right on over and move the bead or arrow without saying a word saving the teacher's own voice in the process. I'll have a few examples of voice feedback modulators up at the blog, attipscast.wordpress.com. I'd like to thank the Maryland Assistive Technology Network for the opportunity to present at the conference back on May 7th. The interactive workshop on alternative professional development seemed to go really well. The website Beth mentioned in the bumper at the beginning of the episode, www dot m-a-t-n online dot com we'll have a link to the collaborative powerpoint that came out of that presentation but i'll have a link to it as well on the blog attipscast.wordpress.com i'll be presenting with some technology resource teachers at the annual teacher researcher conference in fairfax virginia on may 27th on the topic of implementing a strategy a day calendar on teacher desktops as a visual agent of change also, I'll be attending the National Educational Computer Conference, or NAC 2009, in Washington, D.C., and I'll be doing a poster presentation with Sally Norton Dar called Chew the Fat, Policies and How-Tos in Assistive Technology. And that's happening on June 28, 2009. I hope I get to meet you at one or both of these events. Before ending the episode, I want to remind you that it's charity time again, and a bunch of my colleagues will be participating in the local Tour de Cure, sponsored by the American Diabetes Foundation, to help raise money for research to find a cure for diabetes. The weather outside is warming up now, making it a perfect time to clean out the car. Consider donating all the spare change you find in the seats and floor mats and everywhere in your car to the American Diabetes Foundation. Every penny counts, so anything you give would be immensely appreciated. I'll have a link with instructions on how to make a donation over at attipscast.wordpress.com. Until next time! Shh! See here, right here. Your voice needs to stay within this green box, just like this. Here, let me try. Until next time, may all your interventions be inclusive, and may all your strategies be supportive. Happy better speech and hearing month!